So um, today, uh, on the 7th, we talked about declarative memories, the facts and events, and how these are stored in the hippocampus for a period of a few months. Um, and then longer term storage is in the cortex. Um, we also talked about amnesia and how it's classified as anterograde amnesia, which is forgetting new things, inability to form new memories, and retrograde amnesia, which is losing previously formed memories. Um, retrograde amnesia is usually temporally graded, so um, recently formed memories are more likely to be lost, um, especially when the hippocampus is damaged because that's where the recently formed memories are stored. Um, we talked about the work of Brenda Milner with HM um, in terms of how memories are stored, stored um, and so the inability to form new memories that could persist for more than a few minutes, um, at least declarative memories. Um, and then we discussed um, her research in terms of uh, his ability that, uh, that he was able to form other types of non-declarative memories, the sensory priming memories, um, as well as uh, the motor memories, like that famous star tracing task in the mirror. Um, we then talked about um, amyloid and the way amyloid is produced um, with um, beta and gamma secretase cutting amyloid precursor protein into this uh, A-beta-42 molecule. One molecule of that is no problem, but a bunch of them together clump up. And um, there's this protein, apolipoprotein E, or ApoE, um, and different alleles of that have different functionality and can, um, by clearing out the amyloid beta before it clumps up, um, affect your risk of Alzheimer's disease. We also talked about um, a protein called tau, which is inside, and it can get a lot of phosphates added onto it by this enzyme called uh, GSK, which you might hear about, but you don't not need to memorize for the test. Um, and when it gets a lot of phosphates, it clumps together. Um, so what tau does is it helps to move things along the microtubules. And so when um, tau starts clumping together, the movement of various um, neurotrophic factors and other signals and proteins that are needed along the axon and so on um, uh, falls apart. We then talked about the study by Kalignan, um, the last research study for the semester. And in this study, um, what they did was to put human already screwed up misfolded tau into interrhinal cortex of mice. Um, then what they observed is that the mouse tau in the synaptically connected neurons of the hippocampus um, began to clump up. Um, actually, as a, as a side note, we talked about the circuitry of the hippocampus. So information comes in from the rest of the brain, first to interrenal cortex, then to the dentate gyrus, then to the CA3 and CA1 of the hippocampus, and then back out. Um, so the hippocampus is the dentate gyrus and CA3 and CA1. So in the input, not the hippocampus itself, but its input, the interrenal cortex, that's where they put the human tau. And then after a few months, the mouse tau in the hippocampus got all clumpy. Um, and so that indicates that there's some spread of the pathology. Um, maybe trace amounts of the, um, of the human tau gets in, and then it makes all the rest of the mouse tau get all clumped up. Um, or maybe some other way that the, um, that the um, pathology spreads. Um, there's still a little bit that's not known about how the pathology spreads, um, but one last thing that we have not yet talked about, um, but will, is returning to this enzyme GSK. Um, so GSK is normally inhibited by a lot of signals to keep the tau from getting hyperphosphorylated, but amyloid beta outside the cell can interfere with that inhibition. What that means is so when A-beta peptides are released, a single A-beta molecule is not a problem, but when A-beta starts clumping together, then it outside the cell, and that causes a signal inside the cells to phosphorylate and, um, uh, and clump up the tau inside the cells, and then that kills the cells because they can no longer move things around when they need to. Um, there's notably a question mark right here about what, how we go from A-beta aggregates to switching tau into an insoluble form. 
Um, however, um, uh, there is a lot of evidence that this goes on and some hypotheses as to how. Um, so there are a number of papers up on Canvas and plenty more than happy to link to, to connect you with if you're interested in learning about that. Um, but that last little bit that we'll talk about tomorrow is the last bit of new information that you're going to need for the final exam.